how healing occurs when you are manifesting your specific person. Hello beautiful soul, welcome back to my channel. This is Priya, your manifestation coach and in this video I am going to share with you how healing occurs when you are manifesting your SP. But first, if you are somebody who would like some accountability, inspiration, and you would really like to stay on top of your game so that you can stay consistent to manifest anything that your heart desires, I offer monthly membership coaching. This is where you will get live coaching with me on a weekly basis and can have your questions answered by me in real time. You can get access to this by clicking the link below in the description box. I also offer an online course, Manifest Your SP Mastery, that you can get instant access to by also clicking the link below in the description box. And finally, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching to help you manifest anything that your heart desires. Again, you can get access to this by also clicking the link below in the description box. Okay, let's get back to this video. How healing occurs when you're manifesting your specific person. Now, the reason why I made this video is because I made a video before um, called um, healing occurs when you embody the new state and you know the comments that I got below um, that specific video really shine some light on uh, where people are at when it comes to healing and all the limiting beliefs that people have around healing um, in order to manifest whatever it is that their heart desires. So I really wanted to go like deeper into this um, to give you guys more clarity um, so that you're not stuck in a cycle of like, you know, healing for years before you get your stuff. Okay. So the first thing that you want to understand is how does healing occur? Okay. So right now you're probably in a position where you're manifesting your specific person, but maybe you have um, a lot of hurt, um, a lot of resentment or a lot of anger for whatever it is that went down. And so you're wondering, okay, well, well, I, how do I heal from that? Or don't I have to do all this healing before I get like my manifestation? And here's the thing about that. Some people can fall into a trap where they are continuously healing for years and still never see their manifestation because they've activated a state of consciousness that says, I have so much healing to do. I need to fix myself. All these things are wrong with me. And the more you focus on what's wrong with you, what you, you know, that you need fixing or um, the more you focus on that you need healing, you are going to manifest more healing, right? Because what you focus on grows, period, right? That is like spiritual law. The more you focus on what else do I need to fix? What, what other limiting beliefs do I have? You will continue to manifest more of that if you stay focused on that. And in your mind, you have an assumption that says, well, I have all this healing to do, you know, before I can get what I want. It's completely a limiting belief that slows so many people down from actually manifesting, you know, their specific person or the car, the house, the money, the new job, et cetera, et cetera. So, the first thing that you want to understand is how does healing occur? Healing is simply occurs when you shift your state of consciousness. Okay. You're in a new state. When you embody the new state that says, you know, I am lovable. I am worthy. I'm always prioritized. My SP loves me. We're in a happy, committed relationship because maybe that's what you, you know, you're calling in. When you begin to persist with this new story, you will find that you begin to saturate your subconscious mind with this new story. And this new story becomes your norm, right? As you continue to persist with saturating your mind with this new story. So how do you do that? So every time the old story comes up that says, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, SP hates me, you flip that and you come back to your affirmations that you have that say, I'm good enough, I'm lovable, SP loves me, um, we're in a happy, committed relationship. Okay, so you keep coming back to the end. Right. Remember that your affirmations are just the thoughts that you are thinking. And we think at least 70,000 thoughts a day, which means you are affirming at least 70,000 times a day. So the question is like, what are you affirming? And the idea is you want to keep coming back to the end, right? So curate some affirmations that imply your end, that imply you are the version of you that has your specific person that um, knows your value and your worth. And so you want to saturate your subconscious mind with these new stories. And when you do this, like when you continue to persist with the new story, what happens is healing naturally occurs as a byproduct of you persisting with the new story. So all you need to do 
is think as if you're the version of you that has your manifestation and you do that through affirmations and you persist with your affirmations. And as you keep persisting with your affirmations, healing will naturally occur. So it's a natural byproduct of you persisting in the new story because this new version of you that knows your value and worth and that knows that, you know, your SP loves you. This version of you does not have the limiting beliefs that the old version of you had, right? So, you know, the, the old version of you has all these limiting stories or negative stories about yourself and your specific person. Well, the new version of you doesn't have those limiting beliefs. So as you keep persisting in the new state, uh, through your affirmations, what you will find is that healing will naturally occur because now you are the new version of you. Now, during this process of persisting into the new state, that doesn't mean that you won't get triggered or that you might not have grief or anger or hurt or resentment, or all those things. You know, as you're persisting with your new story, those emotions are going to come up for you, but they're there for you to transmute them. So when they come up, you don't want to suppress anything. You want to feel them, release them. But then soon as you have felt those emotions, my question is, what are you doing? Are you continuing to go back to the old story? I'm not lovable. I'm not good enough. SB hates me and continue to spiral on those thoughts? Or are you going to come back to the new story? And keep persisting with the new story. That there is the difference between people who get their manifestation and people who don't, right? It's So it's not about being triggered. Being triggered is fine. That's not going to stop you from getting your manifestation. It's what are you doing after you process that trigger, after you like feel it and release it? What are you doing? Are you going back to the old story or are you persisting with the new story? And so that's the key, really. You want to feel all the emotions that you need to feel, grieve if you need to feel, shout, scream, do whatever you need to do to release those emotions. Do not bottle it up. Do not suppress it. But then my question is, what are you thinking after you've released those emotions? And the idea is you want to keep persisting with the new story so that this becomes the new you. And what you will find as you keep persisting with the new story so that that becomes natural to you. Um, you will find that you are no longer triggered, right? Or that your triggers get less and less, or that your reaction time to your triggers get shorter and shorter. And that is enough for you to manifest what you want. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be triggerless in order to manifest what you want. I've manifested so many things um, where along the journey I was triggered. Like the triggers got less and less, but it wasn't that I was triggerless. You know, even sometimes I might be even triggered on the day of getting a manifestation, but I. I notice the trigger and I quickly come back to the new story, right? That's what being a deliberate creator um, is about, okay? A conscious creator, a conscious manifester. It's about, it's not that you're never going to have triggers. You always are, even when you're in the relationship. But it's about like how fast you bring yourself back to the new story and you focus on what you want instead of giving your attention to what you don't want. So you will still get your manifestation. And that's kind of the message here that, People overcomplicate this, but the truth is it's so simple. You, you naturally heal when you persist with the new story, right? Because you're focused on becoming that version of you that knows your worth and value and that knows that you already have your manifestation. And as you focus on that, healing naturally occurs. So you don't need to do... Um, in a child work or shadow work or any of that other stuff, um, unless you want to, like there's nothing wrong with it, you know, cause I've been asked about it and I, it's not something that I personally do. The reason why is because I feel that what I focus on expands and grows. Um, and I feel that you want to be mindful because you can kind of fall into the trap of I need fixing and there's something wrong with me. And you could fall in that cycle for years when in reality, you don't need fixing. You're already perfect. You're already worthy exactly the way that you are. The version of you that is sad is worthy. The version of you that is angry is worthy of what you want. The version of you that is happy is also worthy. Like all versions of you are worthy of what you want. And if you come from it at that, if you come at it from that mindset, um, things begin to shift really quickly because now you're not shaming yourself, condemning yourself or making yourself wrong. You're saying, hey, I love myself all unconditionally because all versions of me are worthy of this thing that I want, <laughs> right? And so things begin to shift really quickly when you can accept all versions of you and come at it from the mindset of I'm still getting what I want, although I'm triggered or although this old story is coming up, I'm still going to get what I want. Now that doesn't mean 
mull in the old story and entertain the old story that says I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. Obviously, you want to change that. But, you know, where people sometimes get scared is they will say, oh, well, I don't think I'm going to get my manifestation now. My SP now I fucked it up because I just had a spiraling session or because I was triggered. Well, no, right? That's, that's your assumption. And if that becomes your assumption, you will manifest that reality. So instead you want to change that assumption and say, well, um, I'm still getting what, no matter what, I'm still getting what I want. All versions of me are worthy of, uh, manifesting whatever it is that I want. And that is for me, that's what I call true self-love or unconditional love of self. And as for the other modalities such as shadow work or inner child healing and all that stuff, I'm not making it wrong. Like if it resonates for you, cool, like go do it. I personally have never done that type of work. Um, for me, I just begin to focus on what I want and think as if I'm the version of me that has what I want keep a strong mental diet, um, honor any emotions that come up. I do not suppress any of any emotions that come. If I need to have the cry, I have the cry and all the things. But after I'm done with that, I go back to thinking as if, and I really saturate my mind with that new, with my new story. So that I become the version of me that has it. And then, you know, your subconscious mind always has to produce proof of the dominant story that you're telling. That is spiritual law, right? So what you focus on and you know, your stories are really, you know, your thoughts create reality. Let's just start there. And so the stories that you're telling is what you're focused on, whether you're conscious of it or not, the stories that you're telling is what you're giving your attention to. So that's why you want to really be conscious of the stories that you're telling. You want to stay on top of your affirmations. You want to keep a strong mental diet. And as you do this, um, you will find that healing will naturally occur. Like you will just get triggered less and less and less. So my main message here is that you don't need to do all this healing work and like fix yourself and all this stuff in order to get what you want. That's an assumption. How about just saying all versions of me are worthy of what I want? Um, And so when you come at it from that mindset, then the work really becomes about persisting in the new story. That's the only thing that matters whilst along the journey, honoring any emotions that come up or any triggers that come up for you, and you will still get what you want, right? And that is the quickest and fastest way to really get what you want. Because here's the thing, once you get the relationship or you get your SP back anyway, it's not that you're never going to feel triggered again, that, you know, that you are going to have triggers that come up for you. The only difference is you're going to know how to navigate through them. You're going to know to come back to your alignment or to come back to the new story. Um, you're going to now have a new habit that says, I'm not going to entertain, um, hateful stories or unloving stories. Right. And, and then you continue the work, even when you have the relationship now it will be easier because you've already become the version of you that has it. So it's easier to then maintain it because you've already done the bulk of the work prior to manifesting them back, but the work never stops. This is a lifestyle. So yeah, once you get the relationship, anyone that tells you, oh, well, you're not going to get triggered, you know, you need to heal first so that um, when you're in the relationship, you're never going to be triggered. Well, that's not true. Okay. And so really it's just more about mastering yourself, mastering your emotions, mastering your thoughts that that's what a deliberate creator is about and, and doing that now for yourself. And if you can do that now for yourself, you will easily be able to do it when you're in the relationship. So to recap, um, healing naturally occurs when you persist in the new story, when you persist, uh, with your affirmations that imply you are the version of you that has your specific person. Healing naturally occurs because, this new version of you that is now saturated with your new story, such as I'm lovable, I'm good enough, I'm always prioritized, me and SP in a happy, committed relationship. This version of you does not have the limiting beliefs that the old version of you have. Okay, that Those limiting beliefs that say I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, SP hates me, that doesn't belong to the new version of you. And even if it comes up again, let's say like you're in the relationship now and it comes up again, you are going to be... Um, you're going to be able to very easily be like, no, I don't identify with that. That's the old me, right? This is now who I am. And you're going to be able to stay on top of your mental diet, change your story um, to align with what it is that you want like very quickly. So I hope this has given you some insight 
on why you don't need to go down that rabbit hole of I need to heal, I need fixing uh, before I can get what I want. That is just an assumption that just keeps you separate from your manifestation. How about just embracing all of you, knowing that all versions of you are perfect. The only thing that you have to do is just persist in the new story. As you keep persisting with the new story, thinking as if you're the version of you that has your SP, healing will naturally occur. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. Have a beautiful day or a wonderful evening. Mwah.